Okay, let's get started. Uh, today we have an agenda uh, to include uh, a quick development update on the various uh, versions that are in progress at the moment. Uh, an update on upcoming events, including the I2B2 symposium, which is actually going on right now. So that's quite a, uh, upcoming. Uh, and then Axel is going to give us a, a presentation on the eTrix analytical engine, something that I know we've all heard about. Uh, I'm anxious to, uh, to get a look at that. And then at six o'clock here, we have Germany versus Northern, Northern Ireland in the, the 2016 Euro competition. So I don't want to be late for that. So uh, without further ado, um, I will go through the uh, development update news. Uh, first off, in reverse order maybe, is a quick update on the Transmart Pro project, uh, also known as 17.1. Um, where we stand right now is that we are expecting final signatures from Alliance members in just the next couple of days. And so uh, in the meantime, uh, the uh, master service agreement and statement of work between the Transmart Foundation and the Hive has been signed. So we've actually begun, uh, begun work on the project. And the first step was a project kickoff meeting that was just uh, just wrapped up uh, in the last hour, at which we presented an overview of the project plan, the draft project plan, which is to be reviewed and and this week and approved early next week. Once that project plan is approved, we'll launch into the requirements refinement uh, stage of the project to begin next week. That will last a few weeks, followed by the design and then the actual build starting uh, in August. Um, so the project is moving forward. I will be putting up a, a page on the foundation wiki to provide uh, status updates every couple of weeks for the duration of the project uh, as called for in the project plan. So there will be public updates uh, both on the wiki and then we'll provide uh, more detailed updates as well during these community calls uh, for the life of the project. Um, the, uh, the other news on the release front is that the 16.1 release has been released for both uh, Postgres and Oracle. Um, this release was delayed somewhat by, by some last minute bugs that were detected and corrected before the release went out. Um, so if you want to take a look at the news item on the wiki, it has the pointers to both the uh, artifacts on the foundation's library server and the instructions for the single install. So again, this release was focused very much on enhanced code governance and quality processes, uh, a simplified scripted installation for Ubuntu, and uh, a set of uh, signed artifacts on the official uh, foundation library server. Uh, the release notes are also on that server, so you can have a look at those and, uh, and start testing. Um, the, the plan right now is to accumulate any bug reports for 16.1 and make uh, judgments as to the seriousness of the bugs and the uh, the schedule for rolling out fixes to those. Um, we are not necessarily planning for any patch releases, but we will uh, do those in the interim between 16.1 and 16.2 if there are showstoppers found. The 16.2 project is just getting underway. It begins uh, basically this week following the release of 16.1. We are going to uh, continue to target the end of September, which is the original six month schedule, even though we lost a bit of time in the 16.1 uh, timeline. Uh, so it'll be a somewhat shortened integration and test cycle. Um, but the good news here is that mo much of the functionality uh, represents plugins and external functionality uh, that in many cases has been developed and tested already. So it should be largely an integration and test project, not a, not a strongly uh, development focused project. Um, 
the 16.2 uh, uh, release should form the basis of, uh, I believe, the last uh, official eTrix release in particular. Um, there's a, a new project management committee that's been formed to uh, oversee the 16.2 development. And you can see the names here. They represent essentially the contributors of the functionality that are going to go into 16.2. Again, the goals for 16.2 fall into a couple of categories. One is that we want to continue our process improvements. Uh, we made great progress in 16.1, but we learned a few things along the way uh, regarding especially the release process and, and the sort of uh, time that it takes. Uh, we'd like to improve the beta process and give people more time to get their hands uh, on the beta release and give us feedback. Uh, our PMC processes uh, can use some, some streamlining and so forth. And we'd also like to make some progress on the automation of regression testing. Um, that's something that we started on with 16.1, but uh, it's an important, uh, it's going to be an important uh, capability to develop as we go forward so that we can do these releases efficiently. Um, technical improvements include some outstanding JIRAs uh, that are left over from 16.1 that didn't, uh, didn't rise to the level of showstoppers and so forth. Um, GWAS enhancements from uh, Pfizer, some ETL improvements that will be done uh, in conjunction with, between the foundation and Rancho Biosciences, and then the external interfaces that, uh, that have been on the books for a bit. Smart R, the XNAT interface, and the Ingenuity IPA pathway analysis that was announced at uh, BioIT World. So these things have been around for a bit, and uh, we've just been waiting for the 16.1 release uh, to, to get started on this integration process. And if you look at the uh, slide pack after the talk, there's a, a full list of the potential features and the sort of background information on all of them at the link on this, this slide. So the next steps for 16.2 are to go ahead and create the 16.2 branch, uh, continue work on some of the outstanding JIRAs, and we've identified technical contacts for each of the community supplied uh, enhancements. And uh, again, there will be a, a project update uh, set of wiki pages to keep everyone apprised of the uh, project status in between community calls. Uh, next on the agenda is some news about upcoming events. Uh, this material comes largely from uh, Rudy Potenzone, who is currently attending the I2B2 seminar at Harvard Medical School. So I'll try to do this justice, but if there are questions, uh, you might want to address them to Rudy. So first off, as I mentioned, the I2B2 symposium is uh, taking place at Harvard Medical School today, tomorrow, and Thursday. The Thursday session is devoted to uh, uh, I2B2 and Transmart working together. Um, I was uh, alerted by Rudy that the Eventbrite registration site was briefly not accepting new registrations for this uh, last week and early this week. But that problem has been fixed, and there are seats still available. So if you do want to attend that session at Harvard Medical School, please go to the Foundation website, click on the link to register, and there should still be space available. Um, the Transmart uh, Datathon, the second Foundation Datathon, is still scheduled for sometime in, in the late summer at Imperial College in London. Uh, there may be some more details on the foundation website, but I think that is still uh, being formed up, the actual agenda for that. Um, and finally, the, uh, the Transmart Foundation annual meeting uh, is uh, starting to take shape. Um, if you were here last month, uh, you heard that the dates changed from the original date. So if you had that on your calendar, please uh, take a look and, and make sure that you've adjusted that. The location's the same as before. Um, as always, if you want more information about that, you can uh, check out the foundation website at transmartfoundation.org. 
Um, a little more detail on the I2B2 symposium that's going on now. Uh, again, it's a three-day uh, event, and Thursday's session is about using I2B2 and Transmart together. Um, so again, uh, please go ahead and feel free to register for that if you haven't and if you're uh, in the area and would like to attend. Hey, Keith, can I jump in on that real quickly? Sure. Uh, one of the challenges we had is the Eventbrite for the, uh, the symposium on Thursday, the registration, uh, had a cutoff date of a couple of weeks ago for some reason. It was a configuration issue. Uh, so if you tried to register and you found that you were uh, past the cutoff date, that's been fixed. You can register for that. And I would encourage anyone that's interested to uh, come and attend. Uh, what you'll be hearing um, is uh, basically applications of Transmart in a clinical context. And uh, this is a meeting in association with uh, not just the ITB2 uh, users group, but also the uh, uh, Zach Kahani's Precision Medicine uh, Conference, which is uh, being held tomorrow. Uh, feel free to register for that as well. I think there's a $50 fee for the, uh, for the Precision Medicine Conference, and uh, the Transmart uh, piece is, is free. So I'd encourage people to attend. Thanks, Keith. Thanks. Um, a little more detail about what, uh, what's on the agenda for those meetings. Um, I'll just uh, leave this here for a second. Um, Paul uh, will, be, uh, will be talking as uh, providing the keynote address uh, on Thursday. Uh, the, uh, the second datathon at Imperial College uh, late in the summer. The topic will, uh, like the last one, be uh, cross neurodegenerative disease. Um, and more information will be coming on that soon. So this is uh, early, early in the development process at the moment. And finally, again, uh, more details on the uh, foundation annual meeting. Um, uh, there's, there's quite a bit more detail on the foundation website on this one because the planning has uh, started in earnest and, and Rudy's been uh, working diligently to get speakers lined up and to start mapping out the sessions uh, that will take place at the meeting. Um, here is a list of the current uh, keynote speakers uh, that are that are lined up. Um, it should be an exciting uh, an exciting event and in a great location, I have to say. Um, so you can look forward to that again. Uh, check the check the website for more details here. And uh, we're going to try something a little different this year with the, uh, with the uh, sessions. They will still fall into two tracks, but not, uh, not divided into science and technical tracks. The sessions will have a topic, a few speakers, and then followed by a panel discussion. So it'll be a, it, the goal is for this to be a bit more interactive um, around individual topics. So here's a long list of potential topics. Uh, I would like to encourage you if you if you have any particular preferences or ideas for other topics that you don't see on this list, please do get in touch with Rudy. Um, this, we still have uh, still have lots of opportunity to to shape these sessions to fit your your needs and your requirements. So um, so please do do help us uh, plan this. Um, we have another training session coming up, another public training session on uh, Monday the 27th. This one will be given by uh, Yanni uh, from Thomson Reuters uh, and will uh, focus on exploring the advanced workflows in Transmart. Um, and here's just, again, uh, just to give you an overview of the, the year's training sessions. We're into the June. Um, keep in mind that any of the uh, Sessions that have already occurred can be accessed from the foundation website. So you can go back and, and review those at your leisure. Uh, again, uh, if you're on this call and you're not already a member, you're not involved and would like to, uh, to get involved, please uh, go to the website and uh, sign up for some of the mailing lists uh, or ask for a membership package. Um, if, you're, if you're a system administrator, please check out our new system administrators mailing list, uh, which uh, gives us an opportunity to 
uh, address system administrators uh, with uh, technical information about bug fixes, new releases, uh, known issues that come up, that sort of thing. We haven't had that sort of a focused um, mailing list in the past, and we'd like to make good use of it. So if you're in that position, if you're responsible for running an installation of Transmart, uh, please do sign up for that. Um, okay, with that, um, that just about covers the uh, standard uh, agenda items. What I'm going to do now is uh, get Axel on the line. Hello, Axel. Hello, everyone. Hello. Hello. Hi, Axel. Can you hear? Hey. Hello. Hello, Axel. We hear you. Axel, we can hear you. Oh, okay. You can hear me. Ah, oh, good. Yeah. Um, Sorry. So, uh, Axel, I can uh, give you presenter access if you'd like to uh, to run something from your desktop. Yes, please. Okay. Sorry. Okay. All right. I see your screen. Uh, which one do you see? Like... Uh, distributed data analysis. Uh... Ah, so the PowerPoint. Okay. Good. Yeah, Thanks. The PowerPoint. Yep. Great. Uh, so hi everyone. Thank you for coming. Uh, I will present today the Etrix analytical environment uh, that have been developing in the context of Etrix. Sorry, um, and all right, let's go. So, what is the Atrix Analytical Environment? Uh, the Atrix Analytical Environment uh, aims at providing a, an adequate open source project, open source based project. Uh, sorry, framework uh, uh, for managing and analyzing large scale data. This environment has aimed at providing workflows, so such as GWAS analysis, uh, expression analysis for genomics, proteomics, metabolomics. Um, so some workflows are provided in the in this context. I will not go into details today about these workflows, but if you have any question on what kind of workflows I'm talking about and will be provided uh, part of this environment, please after the. I'm happy to present them after this after this meeting. One key concept of this architecture, besides being fully open source, is to be scaling in numbers. Uh, with NGS data, we are facing with a new with new challenges, and this architecture aims at providing a terabyte level of a terabyte level analysis, but as well to be multilingual. The EAU will support natively Python, Scala, Java, and R. So in the context of Spark, only Python, Scala, and R will be supported. At the moment, the R version is not mature enough to be decently uh, supported. But uh, we'll still support R through a cluster of R clients, which is fairly standard. To support uh, the users as well, you will have two entry points to support the two types of users. The first one will be, of course, Transmart. So this entry point uh, to our VA aims at um, enabling biologists to do advanced computations, heavy-duty computations, in a very graphical way. So same as you would do you would with advanced workflow, you just select the data in Transmart, and you run the analysis, and it comes back to you a bit later. Yeah. On top of these computing capabilities, I have implemented a cache mechanism. This cache mechanism aims at enabling the user to see past computations, but avoid uh, unnecessary computations as well. 
meaning if two users do the same computation, uh, the cache will send back the results that the other user uh, has done before him. However, each cache is independent for every user, meaning you don't see what others have been computing. Only your cache is available to you. The second, so I will present transmit a bit later, uh, a demo. Uh, the second one is Jupyter. Uh, Jupyter is a web notebook application for writing and uh, for writing code, but not just writing code as well. It's exploring, uh, designing visualizations for your results. It's enabling you as well to write text or formulas. The it's not marked format, so basically it's similar to LaTeX. So in one notebook, you can have at the same time live code running, visualizations, and the whole story to explain uh, the workflow you are working on. Jupyter currently supports more than 60 different languages, among them Spark, among them uh, R. I will provide part of the environment just to as a core component for Jupyter. But of course, if your needs are different, you are free to add other kernels, which are the interface for the language, and enrich the uh, your environment. It's very flexible. You can add or remove whatever you need. And the NIS, of course, runs different um, either virtual machines or clusters. I will present the final architecture, what I mean by this afterward to explain more details what, how the whole workflow um, of the computation goes. So this is Transmart. So this is a modified version of Transmart that has the EA, that contains the EA plugin that I have developed. Uh, this is not uh, Transmart, sorry, I'm really, <laughs> so this is 124. So 16.0. Maybe someone from the Transport Foundation can help me here. <laughs> uh, yeah, OK. So 1.2.4 1, 1 then transitions to 16.1. So yeah. Uh, OK, so, so this is 16.1. So. OK, so this is 16.1, but it's a research branch, so a branch we have at Emperor College um, we use. But it's very, very similar to the 16.1. Because we merge every change from the Transfer Foundation branch to our branch. It just the summary statistics look a bit nicer. All right. Um, pathway enrichment. So here is just one very small. It's not part of the workflow. It's just a functionality I've developed for pathway enrichment using uh, Keg. So Excellent. I will just yes. Are, are you showing us code, or are you showing us a demo there? A demo. Okay, we're seeing code. I think we ah. might be on the wrong screen. All right. Okay. It's nice code, though. <laughs> Thanks. Um, all right. So, do you see now? It's confusing. Well, so you were seeing slides before. You saw the slides, but in the presenter's view. Interesting. And right now, we see the Transmart screen. So we see the okay. Dataset Explorer. Sorry. So let me start again. So this is Transmart. It's very strange. Okay. Ah, but you were seeing the presenter view. Yes, we were seeing the presenter view. So uh, I think you were on the wrong screen. Yes. All right. Uh, um, all right. So this is, sorry, this is what you should have been seeing all along with Jupyter. All right. My apologies. Yeah, that's, um, that looks right. Excellent. Sorry about this. Um, so. Uh, Transmart, as I was saying, so there is a Transmart. You go to the EAE. You type in, nope. 
just type in the list of, so this is the list of genes I've extracted from a publication, so I know what I'm expecting. Uh, you type in all the list of genes you want, you're in the enrichment choosing which correction you want. Um, so Bonferroni, Home Bonferroni, CDAC, whatever you want. If the job has been submitted, you can see it in the cache. So you see here all the, the query I've just run. Uh, the correction that it started should take just a bit more, so completed. I can see the result. So now I have computed the highest correlated pathways. So you see here HSA uh, 05 to 02. And from CAKE dynamically I retrieve uh, the associated uh, pathway map directly from KEG. So I'm not storing this, I'm just retrieving from KEG uh, this pathway map. You can see highlighted in red all the genes uh, that have been, uh, that are in the list I provide. All the ones in black are still part of the pathway, but not in the list I provide. So this is just to highlight the cache. So now I'm a user, I will another user, look out. All right, minimize, tricks, two. Now, you see my cache is empty. Brain enrichment. And here, instead of doing the computation again, it's retrieving from the cache and sending back the result again. And it appears in my history as well, now that I have done the computation itself, but the, uh, the query never reached the cluster, just the cache handled back the, uh, the request as it could find it in its history. Part of the, my delivery will include so general testing, personalization, and all this uh, in Transmart, but there will be another pipeline, at least another one, uh, maybe two, depending on how the last one goes. Um, if I can finish in time, part of the 1.0 that will uh, uh, be part of the analytics provided in the environment. But only the three will be included in Transmart directly. The others will be given outside of it to be run through Jupyter, for instance. Which I will now present. Uh, I have it somewhere here. So now, this is Jupyter. Uh, Jupyter is web-based, same as Transmart. Uh, it supports as I, all different kernels. So this is R. Uh, the capabilities of this are identical or very close to uh, RStudio. So everything you would do in RStudio, you can do them here. So you see here, this is one notebook running R. So here I load my libraries. I load any kind of code I want, I plot the result directly in there, and I go on and on like this. It's about a very large uh, library of visualizations. Each visualization needs to be linked to a language, meaning the visualization in R won't be the same as in Python. But any library, any visualization library in Python is virtually supported. Um, so let me shut that down. So you can as well interact with Transmart from Jupyter through the Transmart RESTful API developed by the Hive. You can load, of course, you load the library, you connect to Trans, you load this, you go to your user, user to your Transmart. You confirm the access, get the token, All right, connection successful, now I retrieve all the studies from the Transmart, here we go, so analyze, 
So you see here that uh, so this is a transport from the hive. They have loaded couple couple studies. I retrieved the whole the whole list of them. And what I can do is same with what Case has shown in R Studio. I can do analysis on them. I can retrieve so a specific study in that list. I can get all the observation for the set study and then print all the summary. So again, here we go with the data, summary of the data, etc. So you can do any analysis. So if you, there is an analysis that you cannot do in Transmart, but still you have the data in Transmart, you can retrieve them and do all the analysis in here without any problem seamlessly. All right. And last but not least, as I said, I support another analytical engine called Spark. So if you need to do analysis, so Spark analysis and Spark development, you don't want to set up the... Oh, oh come on. You don't want to set up the this mess yourself. So you provide just a web interface of a VM and what? And you can directly play um, with whatever data you want or whatever data source you want directly in here. So you, this is code. Um, this is one of the pipelines I will provide in Transmart, but I have uh, actually developed it uh, in here. So you can see directly all the code, everything I can run for you. So, chuk, chuk, chuk. so sorry, I'm just loading all the all the thing. I'm selecting the study I want, and let's go for the computation. So I'm not going to present this. I'm just showing you what it can do at a very high level. Uh, here, all I'm doing is I take clinical data, and I just want to know which one are binary data, which one are categorical data, which one are numerical data, which one are unknown. Unknown being, uh, is it free text? Is it um, less than three data points? Is it like telephone numbers? Um, all of this is filtered out. This gives you as well, why you're keeping unknown data is because it gives you insights on the quality of your data. Here it's retrieved from Mongo. So I have a Mongo retrieving data. As you can see here, I connect to a Mongo and retrieve all the data, parallelize it. Uh, I compute, I don't know beforehand what type of data I'm facing, so I just compute, I filter, and analyze the data to classify my data into all those different categories. Once I have those categories, I can run additional um, analysis uh, on binary data, a binomial test, categorical data, classical test, numerical data. You can run even the whole um, correlation, Pearson correlation uh, uh, analysis, for instance. So this is, uh, for the sake of this demo, I'm not going to run this part because it takes too long for, for a demo. Um, because it's a very, very small server, so it takes too long for the demo. But you can see a correlation as this with all the features. If I'm zooming in, yeah. So if I zoom in, I can see all the names of the features and all the associated correlation. It's very high resolution, as you can see. But this is one example, but you can, of course, do any kind of visualization you want. As I said before, here is another fully, fully custom visualization. You can do whatever you want. It's very, very free um, and flexible. All right. So all the main backend is based on Spark, so all the Hadoop stack and Spark. Um, I've built on top of this stack my own stack for exchanging the data, transferring the data, all the um, anti-crop processes. Spark is an in-memory computation engine, meaning no, nothing goes back to disk until 
everything is computed, which is a massive gain in terms of performance. And it scales by distributing the computation across different workers. And the largest cluster is more than 8,000 nodes. So you can imagine how much power they can leverage. This is the architecture of the Itrix Antical environment. Currently, we're still working on the arrows 3 and 9 that are being implemented for the delivery of October. But the rest is already there. And one thing I haven't said is, for Jupyter, you rely on local engines, meaning your virtual machine has all the engines locally and can uh, very, very reactively uh, answer you back. However, this enforces a limitation on how much compute you can do. So what we're doing now is a connection with larger centralized clusters to enable larger computations, much, much, much larger computations. So you prototype your code, you explore your data in Jupyter, but whenever you feel ready, you can submit to a large centralized cluster that will do the full scale computation that may run for 12, 24, maybe 48 hours, and then send you back the results. And in Transmart, there is no local engine. It directly submits to the remote clusters and sends back to Transmart through Mongo um, the results. Do you have any questions? I, sorry, I... <laughs> Usually I do this in one hour, so I try to be very, very quick about it. Uh, but if you have any question, I'm happy to answer. Now, if anyone has a question, uh, go ahead and raise your hand, and I will unmute you from here. And uh, Bard, you had your hand up. Uh, do you want to? Do you want to ask a question? Yeah, I, th I think those were comments from before when uh, we were looking at the code. Um, if anybody has a question, uh, please go ahead and raise your hand in the uh, go to webinar window, and I will unmute you so you can ask it. I'm not seeing anything. Um, so Axel, just uh, just to reiterate, so this is uh, your your aiming for an October release date for this? Oh, yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, hang on. Uh, my, my goal is to release as same time as you with, uh, what is it, 16.2 or 17.1? Uh, 16.2 would be the, the, the nearest release. Um, Stephen Wicks has his uh, hand up. Stephen, uh, can you hear us? Yes, hi. Hi. Um, just a quick question. Near the beginning of your presentation, when you were talking about analytical workflows that um, you have plans to incorporate, uh, you indicated that you have a, yeah, this is the one. Um, I'm interested in what, uh, what you're planning for GWAS. Huh. <laughs> um, so this is the fourth one I've mentioned. I said that might be given at the same time. Um, what we are doing currently is with Pfizer, um, we use a UK biobank data um, to run a GWAS analysis. Do you want more details or is it enough? Um, well. So, okay. So, what we plan on doing is take the whole GWAS from UK Biobank, which is 100,000-something people, um, use Park and Plink to run a GWAS analysis. The plan is to compare. They have an in-house Super Plink, um, a new uh, in-house version of Plink, and compare the performance of the two. So which one can yield either the best results Theoretically, the same result, uh, but which one as well in the in terms of which one goes faster? So I'm, I don't know how long it took them to do the analysis, but I will have to do a similar 
same as the one they have done and compare the performance at the end of the day between the two. Okay, and is this integrated at all with uh, Transmart? Or is this uh, completely outside of the Transmart? With the platform? EA. With the EA. Wow, so, okay. so, with the EA, so it will be Jupyter for the interface for writing the code. It will be Spark for the back end with Spark and Plink. And the storage of the data at the moment is unknown. This is um, because the thing is, I still don't have the data. So, I don't know how. Probably it would be very large. Uh, so, depending how large, the whole idea would be to have it stored maybe in Mongo, which is part of the EA environment, and work from there. So Actually, uh, Stephen, too, um, if you, if you uh, in a minute, I'm going to uh, uh, unmute Yanni as well. Uh, there was something I neglected to mention on the slides here for 16.2. Thomson Reuters is contributing a Plink interface uh, for the 16.2 release that is on the it's on the the uh, slide pack that I referenced with the link, but it wasn't on the slide pack that I showed. So uh, I'll take a couple of minutes here and uh, show you the slides that we have for that, and I'll let I'll let Yanni uh, give us a description as well. So yeah, so this is um, at the. Uh, so this is the first stage of the GWAS analysis. Second stage would be to use machine learning and deep learning techniques. But this is definitely not going to be released in October um, because this is this will require a lot more work on our side than the simple a standard GWAS analysis using Blink and uh, Spark. Um, Axel yeah. Vard had a question whether this is a uh, Available on GitHub now, or only in October? Uh, which part? so some parts are already available on GitHub. So typically, the um, plugin for Transmart is available. Uh, all this code is already under review by IBM as well. So there is a there is a code review being done by IBM. Um, but part so the analytics are not available at the moment. Um, but all the rest is is so every, so. What is under development is not on GitHub, meaning the the missing bits are not on GitHub. But the interface for Spark is on GitHub. The plugin for Transmart is on GitHub. Uh, Jupyter is already open source. Everything so it's on GitHub, but not under my repository. Um, the installation is not yet public because I don't want to give a partial installation process. I want to give the whole thing. Um, but if you want some help or maybe install certain parts, I'm more than happy to to help with this. Okay. Um, so, I have a the question full... here from Keith Johnson. He's asking, is the eTrix architecture using MongoDB instead of Postgres or Oracle? No, not instead. No, it 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 comes as a, an additional component. It's not instead. I'm I'm not changing anything of Transmart. Um, no, it's just for certain types of data, of how large they are. It's not easy to have Transmart as a backend. So, I needed an alternative, and Mongo is this alternative. It's not as performant as HBase when it comes to certain applications, such as uh, one of my colleagues has proven using HBase. However, it's m much, much more flexible. And I use it already as a cache, which is excellent I, as a cache. But I can further extend it. This is why I kept Mongo as a NoSQL backend for uh, storing certain types of NGS data such as GWAS, my idea would be to store um, the GWAS data into uh, the Mongo application. Knowing that I've done some work as well to integrate Mongo into Transmart so that you can select some of the data in Transmart, um, in Mongo directly from Transmart, but that's that's gray area at the moment. So officially it's not supported and officially, it's still it's still there. 
but maybe in the future uh, it will be fully supported. It's unfortunately it's a lot of work, and <laughs> I'm alone on this, so I need to fi to set my priorities, and my priority is to complete the architecture uh, as I've shown you. Um, okay. Uh, any other questions for Axel? Um, and then I, I actually have a couple of uh, corrections I want to make as well. Yeah. All right. Any? Nothing? Uh, let's see. Let me just see if anybody else has their hand up. Um, nope. It looks like that's it. Okay. Well, thank you, Axel. Um, very, Thank you very much. Very useful, and yeah, we'll uh, we'll keep an eye on that for the sixteen point two release or or thereafter. Um, and and I hope um, so. That's my plan to do a full demo. So no slide, just a demo uh, for the before the Transmart annual meeting. Oh, okay, great. Um, so okay. with Transmart plugin, etc. So to have a finalized version by then to show and demonstrate with. With you guys, so with Transmart, everything that is done with Transmart uh, in that context. Okay, I'll uh, pass that on to Rudy. All right, um, I'm gonna take control back yet and uh, make one correction. Uh, an inconsistency in the slides that I had not noticed is uh, when I mentioned uh, Yanni's training session on the 27th. Up here it says exploring advanced workflows. That's actually a leftover from last month. Um, Yanni's session is actually an ETL tutorial. So apologies for that. Um, looks like a, a copy and paste error. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention is uh, on the slides that I showed for 16.2, they did not include a feature that Thomson Reuters is going to be contributing which is a GWAS, a Plink integration with Transmart. So, Stephen, this may uh, be of interest uh, to your question as well. And, Yanni, I'm just going to unmute you just in case you want to chime in. Um, so this is something that uh, uh, Thomson Reuters has been working on, and I have a couple of slides here that Yanni provided uh, to give an overview. And, again, this is, this is in the um, presentation that's in the link from the slides, but it didn't make it into the slides itself. So I apologize for that. Um, and as soon as my Google Slides responds. Hi, Hi Yanni. Hi. Um, so firstly, thank you for the corrections. Um, that's, that's fine. I understand that it's a lot of moving parts and copy and paste errors. Secondly, firstly, I'd like to thank Stephen, who's on the call, who, was, uh, who originally um, started this whole um, P-Link uh, integration that has been instrumental in bringing this forward. And by the way, Axel, very nice presentation. Um, so just just a very brief description of, uh, of what we've uh, done so far. So this was uh, essentially trying to address the problem where um, a lot of geneticists like to work natively with uh, Plink data. So what we've done is we've created in the database, we've um, created a new data table to support the binary data table data format within Transmart, so the, the typical genetic um, files. We've also included um, ETL support, so our um, TM data loader now supports the um, the upload of link data um, into Transmart and also has and also has, sorry, um, you can probably hear a lot of background noise, I apologize for that. I'm in an open plan office. Um, and where we load the BIM files as a platform. And essentially what the what this enables is that we can do de novo GWAS, so we can use the functionality in the Analyze uh, tab uh, to define our, our, um, our two subsets and run a de novo um, association analysis. And what we're working on at the moment is also to um, try and include Sorry, is the is the background noise too much that you can't understand hear me? Yeah, we can still hear, but I didn't know if that was your uh, your office or someone else. Yeah, 
Yeah, so the uh, I, it is my office and I apologise. So the next steps we're going to do is we're going to um, attempt to uh, to um, enable linear and logistic uh, models to be run um, via, via Transmart. And we're also looking at to integrate it with the Pfizer GUS um, functionality to, to leverage the um, Guava for the result visualization and storing of the results. And I'll stop here because it's too noisy in the, in the office. And thank you for um, letting me speak. Okay. Uh, thanks, Yanni. And, and again, I apologize for that. Um, the, the slide I presented is an old one, but. Um, so I encourage you to take a look at the um, at the presentation that is linked to in the slide. Uh, this is the more up to date and be, beyond just a, an itemization of the features. It also has uh, links to uh, wiki pages and, and GitHub repositories and that sort of thing. So it's essentially uh, everything that uh, we've been able to accumulate on each of the features so far. Um, so this is the starting point for 16.2. Um, Terry is in the process of uh, trying to put together uh, a, a continuous integration environment so that all these pieces can be tested over the next few months uh, as part of the development and release, or test and release process. Um, so again, thanks, Yanni, and apologies for, uh, for missing that the first time around. Um, all right. Well, we're almost at time here. So uh, if anybody else has a question quickly, uh, if you want to raise your hand, um, we have time for one more. And if not, then I will go ahead and wrap up uh, this month's uh, webinar. No, no. Okay. Um, I don't see any other questions. So, so yes, uh, thank you everyone for attending and I uh, wish you all a good, good evening and a good day. Thanks. Thanks, Keith. Good job.